All right, I want to welcome West Virginia to the podium. Um, we have to my immediate right Asia Bussey, Taylor Palmer, Coach Mike Carey, and Crystal Caldwell. A couple things I want to remind you before we get started. Be sure your cell phones are on the off position for the courtesy of those around you. Also remind you that no flash photography is allowed during today's press conference. And we also want to introduce you to SID Katie Kane. Katie, raise your hand. So any <laughs> Apparently Katie brought her fan club with her, so if you have any West Virginia information, questions, Katie will be here to help you. Uh, before we open up to questions, Coach Carey, if you can just give an opening statement. Well, we're excited to be here. We know it's going to be a great tournament. Um, and our players did a great job this year, and uh, hopefully we can come in here and play well. But we're excited, and, uh, you know, Albany, we know they're a great team. You know, they won their league, won their tournament, so we, we give them a lot of respect and we know it's going to be a tough game tomorrow. Okay, if you have questions either for the student athletes or for the coach, raise your hand and we have a microphone available. So raise your hand, please identify yourself and uh, the outlet for which you work. Uh, Chandler Rome for Badger Advocate. Uh, Mike, and for any of the players that want to chime in, this Albany team doesn't seem like a typical 15 seed. They've got the number two score in Division One. What do you guys have to do to, sh to stop Richards, and what makes her go? Well, she's very athletic. She gets up and down, runs the floor extremely well. Uh, post, they, they, they're always looking to lob to her and the other post players. So, you know, they do a good job. I think they all know their roles, and they know where the ball needs to go and that type of stuff. So, you know, we played against a lot of good athletes during the course of the season. So, you know, we've seen players like her, and it's a tough matchup. And we know, you know, you're, you're, you're exactly right. They have some very good basketball players. Matt Harris, Baton Rouge Advocate. Mike, I'm sure you've been asked variations of this question before, but just given the time it's taken to build this program to the point where it is now, how much is this month about opening eyes nationally. I know within the sport itself, what you guys have done is pretty well known, but a lot of for the general fan may not know until they get to this month. How much do you feel like this can sort of put you guys on the same trajectory as like a Louisville or, or any of those teams that, from your former conference? Well, we really don't want to be like a Louisville. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> That's not our goal, believe me. But no. Um, you know, we, we feel like... Uh, you know, we, we still got a lot to prove. We still, you know, we still don't get a lot of respect throughout the country and that type of stuff. Uh, you know, we, uh, in our second year in the Big 12, so, you know, we had to go prove ourselves in that leg, you know, coming from the Big East. So, you know, our girls are hungry. They understand that uh, we have a lot to prove. And, you know, we haven't proved anything yet. So the, this is this tournament's very important, but everybody's starting out want to play their best basketball and play extremely hard, so we realize that. Uh, Todd Murray, Dominion Post. For each of the players, do you guys feel that pressure for the most part is something that's more self-inflicted than anything? How, how do you all view that? Um, I would think so. Coming in as a higher seed, you automatically think that people think that you're supposed to win that game, but you can't look at it that way. Um, like Coach Carey said, they're a great team, and everyone, it's, it's, it's tournament time now, so everyone's going to give you their best shot, and you can't just put too much pressure on yourself thinking about it. I'm sure you saw a lot of, a lot of the upsets yesterday on the, on the men's side. Is it just going to drive home the point that you'll play your best basketball each time out you're, you're going to be going home? Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, like Coach was saying, you know, this is a fresh start. Everybody's going to play their best basketball right now. You know, it um, doesn't really matter what you did the rest of the season. You know, this isn't this is important. It's a one and done now. So everybody wants to be a national champion. So they're going to go and play like it. Hi, uh, Kara Capuano with ESPN. This is for each of the players, and you can just interject when you have it. But um, if you could give me a word or a phrase that you would use to describe this year's team and a little bit on, to on why you picked that. It could all be the same word, but i just like to throw it out, especially to senior leaders. Um, I'll go ahead and say fighters. I feel like there were so many times where we could have given up, but we didn't, and we came back and won the game. So definitely this team knows how to fight and just stick it out for 40 minutes. I would say fearless. Uh, you put us up against, you know, some of the top teams 
um, in our conference and in the country, and we don't back down. You know, it's going to be, like Crystal said, a fight the whole game, and we give our all, and we're going to play to the end. So we're definitely fearless. We don't really care about who we're playing. We're going to go out there and get it. Um, I would just say heart. I think we play with a lot of heart, and um, this season we came in and we just knew that we had a great team, and we were just going to go out there and have goals that we just needed to accomplish. Asia, as someone that may match up against Richards a little bit, what have you seen from her on film? Is what you know, Coach said they like to throw lobs and stuff, but what have you seen from her that gets her going? What can you do defensively to maybe neutralize her? Um, I, I think it'll just be a, a team effort. Um, our guards have to get their hands up, and then we just have to play West Virginia defense. That's what we pride ourselves on. So just you know, helping each other out and um, just defending as a team. This is for each of the players, but I'll start with Asia. Last year, you obviously had to sit and watch the transition to the Big 12, and that probably wasn't what you all wanted in year one. Just what did you guys take away from last year's you know, 500 start in the Big 12 and, and carry forward this year? What were some of the lessons that you think gave you guys that identity you just talked about? I'm just learning from last season. We knew what we did wrong and um, like some of the things that we needed to change and how we had to play for ourselves. Um, the coaches, they can only do but so much. They're out there uh, on the sideline coaching. We have to play for ourselves and we have to be motivated. So I think we realized how important each game was and just it's upon ourselves. We go how far we want to go. Asia, I know you go against the, the six seven girl from Texas. You're going against a, a six nine girl tomorrow. Talk a little bit about the challenges you know that presents and how maybe you have to alter your game you know a little bit when you're playing against somebody who's that much taller than you. Um, the challenge is definitely just the height challenge, but um, like I said, the the biggest thing would just be the guards helping, you know, trying to get them to have their hands up so they can't throw too many lobs and um, just try to stay out of foul trouble. That would be my biggest goal and um, just being straight up and make the shot difficult for her. And next question. Coach Gary, I know you get tired of maybe hearing the question about comparing the Big 12 and the Big East, but just how did the move change the identity of the program or what sort of opportunity did it give you guys to sort of leave one conference and go to the other? I know that's, you know, that can always be something. Yeah, I really about. don't. I don't comment on, you know, Big East was a great league, Big 12 great league. So, you know, both of them are great leagues. Um, you know, we're more in the Midwest now and that type of stuff. And, uh, you know, I think the first year or two, the Big 12, you know, you had all new scouts, new styles, new coaches, uh, just going, picking hotels. You know, some of them were, we thought was close to the arenas, and they really weren't. And, and I think some people told that, us on that purpose, to be honest with you. But, you know, you never know your first year when you go around. So I just think it was an adjustment period for, for the whole team, the staff and administration. This is really for all of the seniors we've talked since before the season started just about you know the goals that you have this year and knowing that you don't get another shot uh crystal if we could start with you and just go down the line how much do you feel like the fact that you have five seniors who all play a big role on this team has gotten you to where you are and can be the reason why you go further than you have in the past I was actually talking about this earlier with Brooke in the room. Um, we were talking about how experience can play a big role, and we were look, looking at some of the NCAA guys play, and they were talking about like big names and stuff like that, but it just seemed that experience plays a big role. You've been in certain situations before, so you kind of know what to expect. So I think that's helped us a lot this year, and it's going to help us in the tournament as well. Um, yeah, I agree. Uh, experience is huge. And um, not only the experience, but the leadership out of the seniors as well. You know, um, the younger players, uh, they listen, you know, they, they, uh, they're attentive and like they understand what we really want as a team. You know, it's more important, I guess, for the seniors just because it's our last go around. But the whole team feels the same way. You know, we want this opportunity. And um, like you said, uh, like Crystal was saying, we've been in these positions before. And um, it's going to be up to us to lead the team and help them to get over, you know, some little humps that, you know, we might see going down the line. Um, I, I think having five seniors is good for the leadership and experience. We're able to lead by example. 
But um, just as a team, I feel like our team came together, not just the five seniors. I think, like, for example, Avery has hit a couple big shots for us to win tight games, and um, she's vocal. And I think everybody knows their role, not just the seniors, and I think that's what makes our team so special. Like you talked a little bit, I think, about Albany's defense being sort of similar to TCU. Uh, in some ways, is that I know TCU had that man thing in their zone disguised as a man that kind of gave you some trouble throughout the year. Uh, can, can you speak to you know what Albany does? Yeah, that, you know they're going to do a two-two-one, different pressures out of a two-two-one back into their two-three. They bring their forwards extremely high. You know they get a lot of steals out of their zone because they they, they come up high in their zone, try to steal the reverse pass, skip passes, and that type of stuff. So. We're going to have to do a good job taking care of the basketball. And, and you're right, TCU, uh, thanks for bringing that up, Todd, but TCU gave us a hard time three times we played them. And uh, there's no doubt that we'll have to adjust to their zone and style and, and stuff. This is for Crystal and Taylor. You guys have had to rally back in some games this year. Just which one of those sort of sticks out to you and speaks most to the identity of that sort of toughness you're talking about and not quitting and things like that? Which game, when you had to fight back, do you think sort of represents that? Um, for me, definitely Oklahoma. It was. It could have been so easy for us to just stop and just give up. We got down by so much. We had a lot of people in foul trouble, but just somehow we just found a way and we fought the entire game and <laughs> pulled out a win. <laughs> um, I would say, well, yeah, but I, I would say <laughs> um, Texas, uh, that was a close game. And, you know, we went into overtime, and it was on our home court, too. So it, it was a tough game, the whole game. You know, our shots weren't really falling, but, you know, we stuck it out and um, went into overtime and pulled out a huge win. So I say Texas. What, what we're laughing about. <laughs> We played Oklahoma at Oklahoma, and they got 1.2 seconds, whatever. And so they said, we just decided, okay, we're going to switch everything. All right. Well, Taylor tackled the girl, <laughs> and she went to the foul line and ended up missing the second one. So we turned around. We're playing Baylor at Baylor, and there's like 1.3 seconds. And so I look at Taylor, and I said, now I'm telling you, don't do not tackle that girl in here this last 13.13 seconds. So that's what they were laughing <laughs> Okay, next question. Uh, Scott Rabelais with the, the Advocate. Coach, uh, if this was next year, I know it's not, but uh, you know, hypothetically, you'd be playing at home under the, the way they're going back to the top four seats, you know, uh, having uh, being able to host in the first and second round. Your, your thoughts on, on that move, and how do you feel about the fact that you know, potentially you, know, you could play on someone's home court like a lot of the higher seats in, in this year's term? You know, I think maybe... Since we've been going to in, since I've been at West Virginia, I think we played on somebody's home court every year but once. So I mean, it's something that we've done. Uh, you know, we, we've had opportunities where we could have hosted that, but you know, I was always until we become very, very consistent. I didn't want to look at the athletic director, knowing that we didn't make it and we owe all these thousands of dollars. So I mean, so that was pretty much my fault. Um, but I felt. Uh, you know, it's tough. Anytime you go play on somebody's home court, it's tough. But I will give this group, I've said this for two years, this group for some reasons is more focused on the road than they are at home. So now next year it may not be the case. So, you know, that may be a little bit different. But this group for some reason last two years has been more focused on the road than they have been away from home. Hey, should I understand you you have a brother who's in Louisiana yes. right now, and, and I, I know they've been coming to a lot more of your games this year than maybe we've seen uh, in the past. What's that meant to you, your last season, uh, to have them in the stands? I know sometimes he irritates you a little bit with his coaching from the stands, but uh, what's that been like? Um, it means a lot just because um, these are like the first games he's been to since I've been at West Virginia, and he's been to uh, quite a lot this year. So um, I appreciate him coming to these games, especially in my senior year, and um, just having him to give me feedback after games and um, him, like, motivate me during the game. Where is he? New Orleans. Um, he's a GA at Xavier in Louisiana. Yes. 
further questions? Another one for Coach Carey. Uh, uh, Akila Bethel obviously is here at LSU now. I just uh, did you th ever have any thoughts about hey you might see her when you come down here? I know she won't play in the game, but uh, your thoughts about that and, and you know your feelings on on the fact that she left your program and is now here at LSU. You know, we get, we wish her the best. Um, it's probably good. You know, she has to sit out this year, so we're not going to be playing against. But I, you know, I I wish her all the best. I hope she has a great success down here at LSU. So. Um, did it cross your mind? Not really. Not really. I'm usually out of sight, out of mind, to be honest with you. But, uh, no, I wish her. She's a great young lady. She'll she'll do a good job down here at LSU. So I, I wish her only the best. I got it. was nine years ago when you played Southwest Missouri State there for the WNIT title, coached by uh, Coach Abe from – Albany. I mean, what you remember about that? Uh, any this, other, right? Yeah, they did. <laughs> Are you getting Just, good news, uh, Todd? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. They and do. he had the same type stuff. of stuff that yeah. you maybe remember that she was doing then that she's she doing now. She does a great job. I mean, they're very organized. Like I said, everybody knows their role on the team. They take good shots. Uh, you know, they're deep. they play extremely hard. Um, they put people in the right position. You know, so, you know, they're well coached, and, you know, I understand that, and uh, we're going to play extremely well. And, and, you know, at times we're going to hit some shots from the perimeter. I just think, you know, we we got to be in attack mode uh, against it. You know, a team, uh, we always tell the players when we're playing against a, a zone for 40 minutes, let's, on makes and misses, let's push. Let, let's, let's try to push it up and make things happen before the zone can set up. So. That'll be something that'll be very important. And then we got to take care of the basketball against their 2-2-1. Two, two, this is for Coach. Every program seems to, you know, sort of adopt the mantra of us against the world, you know, having to fight and sort of grow. You're kind of on the cusp of flipping that here. How does that sort of change of mentality from hunted? From hunter to hunted, sort of come into play, and when do you? I guess when do you? When do you sort of yeah. make that switch? Well, we still we, we, we still have a lot to prove. We, we haven't done anything in the NCAs. That's and that's been under me. Uh, you know, we we got a lot to prove. Our, our, our young ladies, you know, they played extremely well and hard all thing. But you know, we have some goals going forward here, and uh, you know, we just got to come out and play. We got to come out and do what we've done all year. And and, and they mentioned about. You know, heart and all that. This team probably has more heart. And you know, there's times we were down during the game, and you know, I'm just there. Da, 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 da. And then they'll come out. There's coach. We got this. And I said, Well, could you do it before long? <laughs> Get this before long. But you know, we just got a great. People are going to battle on that. And then I want to mention about Asia. You know, even though she's going to be fronting and all, we we front. There's got to be weak side and there's got to be ball pressure. So if, if they're getting a lot of lobs inside. It's because of three things. We're not putting ball pressure, we're not fronting well, or we're not getting weak side well. So that, those are the things. That's what Asia was talking about as a team thing. Okay, any other questions for the coach or the student athletes? Not that necessarily has anything to do with the game tomorrow, but we're in the Maravich Center. Mike, did you, did you follow Pete Maravich at all? Oh, right. absolutely. Absolutely, and his dad, uh, he used to coach at D&E in West Virginia there, so, and that, yeah, absolutely. Have you heard of Simone Augustus? Yes. <laughs> Definitely. You know, it's amazing, we'll bring recruits and players to West Virginia and we'll say, do you know who the NBA logo is? And they have no idea, and then you say Jerry West, and they still have no idea. <laughs> That's even at our place. <laughs> but I can remember being down here working camps at LSU uh, when Craig Karsh was an assistant coach here under Dell Brown. And uh, so I've been down here a few times. Okay, last call. Any other questions for the coach and student athletes? All right, the West Virginia.